What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today, in the world of indie games, we're going to be diving down deep into Pendragon. I forgot to start over real fast. Yes, I, I'm okay with it. We can we can do that right there. Anyways, welcome to Pendragon. Uh, this is a story-based RPG set in Arthurian times. It's got a little bit of a roguelite feeling to it as well. Honestly, it doesn't have that tagged on Steam. But I've played for a couple of hours, and that's kind of the feeling that I get from it. Uh, you pick a character from Arthurian lore, and this is basically at the end of King Arthur's line, uh, when he's getting ready to face off against Mordred. I don't remember the storyline super well. I know that I've read King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table back when I was like a freshman in high school, but honestly, I'm so far... It's been 20 years. I'm a, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little fuzzy on anything that you expect me to remember after 20 years. But I do remember that being like later on in the story when uh, when Arthur squares off against Mordred or whatever. And so all of the knights from the Shattered Round Table are kind of coming back to assist Arthur and kind of burying the hatchet, I guess. And it's randomized every single time you play the game. You have different events and things that go along and it slowly kind of writes this storyline. And when you eventually die or fail or succeed at your quest, you can go back through and you can read the entire thing and you kind of generate these weird little roguelite stories uh, about you rallying allies and everything to save England. So let's start it on off. I, I don't know if this will be a game for everybody. It does have kind of a weird combat system. I've got like a, a firm grasp of it, although there's certain aspects of the combat that I haven't had a chance to figure out yet just because it hasn't come up. They haven't been relevant. So maybe we'll get there today. Uh, Britain, AD 673. Camelot has fallen. We must fall back to Camelot. Uh, the jealous Sir Mordred has broken the fellowship of the Round Table. The Knights of Arthur have scattered, and all hope seems lost. Who will keep the dream of Camelot alive? Portland. Portland can keep the dream of anything alive. Alright, so we got two characters we can pick from at the beginning of the game. Uh, we can play as Queen Guinevere of Camelot, the gracious wife of Arthur, unfaithful yet loyal. I don't think that's how that works. I don't think you can be unfaithful and loyal at the same time. I don't, I, I don't think that that's how, I don't think that's how those adjectives work. A and then we also have Sir Lancelot du Lac, uh, Arthur's chivalrous best friend and traitor to him. It's true, Lancelot slept with his wife. It's not a good look. Not a good best friend look. I think you automatically down your you automatically downgrade yourself from best friend to like acquaintance if that's what takes place. Like, mm, uh, let's see. We'll go with Lancelot for right now. The ferryman pulls the barge closer to the riverbank, and a hooded passenger steps ashore before he can change his mind. So, Dulac. Another vow broken. I can't even keep my word to stay away from this ill-begotten country. Alright, uh, so basically the way that this works is we have different stances. It also works like Qbert. Um, I don't know exactly why you want to control territory in this game, but like you control any territory that you step on, and there's different ways to claim more territory, but this is the mechanic that I'm talking about that hasn't become relevant. I played the game for about an hour, and the territory claiming part never really seemed to matter in combat at all. I think maybe on higher difficulties or something it might, or maybe in later battles, I'm not sure. We'll keep on walking over this way. When the round table broke apart, Sir Lancelot fled to France, but a terrible vision has compelled him to return. This is as far as I go, stranger. This is far enough, ferryman. From here I'll walk. And where exactly are you going? Mordred and Arthur. They are to meet one last time. And their battle will decide the fate of the kingdom. A battle for the kingdom, huh? Well, now. You're certain of that. Uh, so we can change our stance. You can either move in, in terms of cardinal directions, or you can move in terms of diagonals. It's up to you which one you want to play around with, but they come with their own passives and benefits. So when you're moving diagonally, you automatically claim everything that's adjacent to the square that you move into, but in return, you cannot attack or defend. Likewise, if you're moving in the cardinal directions, you can only move one space at a time, and you only claim the land that you stand on, but you can attack and defend. So it's up to you which one you want to do. There's also other things that come along. 
Yeah, there's my stance right there. Oh, I'm quite certain Arthur is to meet Mordred at Camelon far north. The rumors they reached even across the channel. I heard rumors, too, of soldiers out looking for a French knight. That wouldn't be you, is it? We'll move over here. And if it was, would you tell them that you saw this knight? That I wouldn't. Right, we'll change our stance real fast. That is going to use up our turn. And then we're going to have to step forward. And it's on you to stop the battle, is it? Mordred has an army. And Arthur has none. He fights alone. I will not deny him my sword. Well then. Rather you than me, I should think. Fare thee well, Sir Knight. With that, the ferryman pulls away from the bank and disappears from sight. So yeah, anyways, as I was saying before the storyline stuff, controlling territory, it allows you to use certain abilities. So some abilities can only be used on enemy territory, and some abilities can only be used on friendly territory. So there's going to be different abilities that allow you to, like, attack and retreat and sort of press forward based on what you control and what the enemy controls. It's really situational. It hasn't really come into play a whole lot during my time with the game, but I assume that it will at some point. Arthur, I will find you. I'm your best friend. Or perhaps I'm your very worst. Probably the latter, knowing what you've done, man. Probably the latter. But either way, you will have my sword. Perhaps you will... Nah, I think forgiveness. I don't know if I can forgive on that level, man. We'll try, though. Perhaps you will forgive me. Perhaps you know that Guinevere and I truly love... That's not going to help me feel better at all. Not even, not even slightly. Alright, so we've got a new ability based on the choices that we've made. Uh, so as you make these storyline decisions, it's going to allow you to either keep your old ability or grab a new one that you want to play around with. And so that was a core story advancement, and so we got pushed forward. So I can charge a square further outside of my own territory in exchange for one of my resolve. A short walk from the riverbank is the alehouse known as the Wayfarer's Rest. A few old mares are tied up outside, sheltering under the awnings of the rain. So when we're not joined in combat, we can move in any direction that we want to, by the way, and we're still kind of in defense mode, and we claim as though we're moving diagonals. Stealing a boatman's horse is a small crime when compared to treason, compared to falling in love with the queen. Besides, the boatmen inside are too drunk to care. He freezes. Someone is moving out in the darkness across the yard. There's someone here. Definitely something here, creeping through the dark. I'm gonna go ahead and change my stance real fast. You are a wolf, perhaps. So close to the village, eh? I will have your neck. Mierd. Nothing but a filthy dog of the tavern. Uh, we should probably hang out here. Actually, never mind. It wants me to charge forward. There we go. The dog gnashes at your heels as you leap past. The dog turns suddenly and dashes away. Perhaps it saw a rat. There you go. And now all we got to do is get off the map. This is it basically uh, is teaching us the core concepts of the game, which really Lancelot hurries over to Meadow, who is cropping in a nose bag. He smiles with cold delight. What shall I call you, Meadow? I had a horse named Meadow as a boy. There you go. And so in the saddlebags, we found two rations. So as I was saying, what they're teaching you right now is the core concepts of the game. Uh, I know it seems like we just avoided that fight when we could have just killed the dog, but it's showing you that not only can you avoid threats, it's also showing you that sometimes if you don't kill a thing, it'll just go away on its own. Like, I find that as I played this game a little bit longer, combat mattered, but a lot of the time you could kind of avoid combat by just, like, going around the enemies and stepping into the end zone, and then there would be a completely different conversation that would happen between you and the guy that you dodged, and you might resolve and become friends, they might just leave, they might give you something, they might swear at you and run away, they might give chase, but then it resolves in a text box. Like, it's kind of interesting. Like, you don't always have to kill everything. Uh, one last adventure for you then, Meadow. The road ahead lies into Coed, Coed Logris. 
Wild woods. People used to travel that way to reach Brittany, men and women. Find your way through the dark for me, Meadow. If I mess up any words that are like Old English or Old Welsh words, I'm really sorry. But I don't speak like Old Frisian, and I don't, I don't speak Welsh. So unfortunately, I'm going to butcher those things, all right? It's just going to happen that way. Uh, we've got to go to the forest. That's where it told us to go. Speaking of which, do you love this map? Look at the way this map looks. It just looks great. Like, I love the way it appears, and it just keeps going. Like, it's such a cool map. Like, I love the way that it... I don't know if that's called parallax. Like, I don't know. But it's got, like, a curvature that it rotates around as you go upwards. You can see it rotating into view. So this is, like, technically... I don't know if it's just a trick of the eye, but it's supposed to look circular as you're panning upwards and across everything. I don't know. I like it a lot. It looks really, really good. It kind of reminds me of a helicopter rising into the air and watching the land unfold in front of you further and further out. Uh, we need to go to... Well, we we, we got to go to the forest first. So we'll go there. The journey from France has been long and Sir Lancelot is hungry from the road. We will eat a ration for right now. I do wish that there was a bit more animation to the characters. Like, I get why there is no animation, because the ragdolls aren't designed with, like, elbows and knees and stuff. But sometimes I wish that they had, like, a walk animation going on in. Between the yard of Wayfarer's Rest and Thom's Village lies a dark sprawl of Coed Logris, an ancient forest full of strange things. And Sir Lancelot rides in. Oh, this is different from the last time I did it. Last time I did it, I had to deal with, like, a bunch of brambles and shit. Uh, Arthur, he always liked forests. I never quite understood it. All right, let's move on in here. The damp, it'll rust your armor. The mud soaks into your socks. Do knights wear socks? My old swordmaster would say, a knight is only as good as his socks. Well, there you go. I assume that knights wore socks. I, I, w I always figured that knights wore, like, hosiery. You know what I mean? Like, hose. Uh, not quite socks. Well, you know. Arthur grew up beside a forest. That must be why he likes them. Me, I grew up in a farmyard. I like, uh... You like Arthur's wife. You stop talking. Alright? I like it when the animals don't try to kill you. Alright, so we've claimed that territory right there. I don't know how I've stood this country and it's rained for so long. So the bear's gone over there. That's good. A bear is crashing through the trees, barely a stone's throw away from Lancelot. We may have to kill this guy. It's possible. Now then, it's not so hard to trick a bear. Stay calm and let them come to you. Parbleau. Now there's two. Well, we gotta change stances first, because we can't even defend ourselves right now. He draws his sword as quietly as he can. I'm ready for you, bears. Uh, I'm not gonna move over to there. I'm a little closer. There we go. The bear is trailing the movements of Sir Lancelot. He tenses. And that's how combat works. That's pretty much it. Whoever attacks wins. There's no HP. There's no life. You die in one hit. The enemy dies in one hit. That's pretty much how the entire thing functions. Uh, I believe I can charge forward right here, maybe. He can smash down bushes. Okay. Uh, we gotta wait right here. We don't have much of a choice. We used to eat bears in my home village. We roasted the haunches in red wine. I look at you, bear, and I smell rosemary. There you go. And there's our second bear down. Not only did we kill one bear, we killed two bears in one day. A look of relief breaks across Lancelot's face. The mushrooms and roots of the forest have provided you with extra meals. Nice. Perhaps I should have journeyed south in my youth instead of north. I could have been a knight of the long sands and the starry skies. I recognize this road from the maps. It leads to Midvi Castle. It is said that Sir Kay resides there now. Ride me safely there, Meadow. I have need of his loyalty. Uh, yeah, this is a party-based game, by the way. We will be picking up more people that will join us in our fight against Mordred. And in fact, your chances of succeeding are going to go up with time as you have more and more allies. So I, I suggest you focus on that, maybe. And not just heroes, too. Like, it's not just the Knights of the Round Table that you can recruit. You can also pick up uh, Morgana. You can pick up, like, a bunch of other different people from the Arthurian story, too. Uh, we should definitely go to Midvi. So we'll set a path for there because Sir Kay sounds like a good acquisition. Uh, 
I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to be stopped. Ah, we'll go with that one right there. Well, we made that decision, and it gave us some morale, so that's really, really good. I love the soundtrack. The music is really beautiful. It's got kind of a John Williams feeling to it, almost, with the, uh, with the somber trumpets and everything in the background with a lot of reverb. The path winds between the rocks as it climbs the hillside to Midvi Castle. One bend, it passes a low opening, roughly cut into stone, no larger than what a child could climb down into. It is the entrance to an old mine. A silver-blue gleam flashes from deep within. Anything might be here. Sir Lancelot hurries quickly past and towards Midvi Castle. Sir Kay, are you here? The doors to the place have been broken. Perhaps Sir Kay was here, but was he driven away? He screamed like a pig. From out of the gloom, a heavy knight appears. Zuth, one of Mordred's dogs. Uh, we need to grab these over here. These will give us a bunch of morale. Or, I'm sorry, not morale, but it'll give us... Ooh, you can't intimidate me. I've done things that would turn your hopes. Okay. What can he do? He's got a linear stance. He can charge through owned squares and attack. I don't know if that means he can attack one of my squares. I'm going to move over to here just in case. Lower your sword. Lower it and leave here with your head. This country has made its choice. It's time you accepted that. I'm going to fall back to here. Where is Sir Kay? What have you done with him? Comrade of yours, was he? There we go. Now we're in a better position. We'll hold right here. Please. This is not the end. Mordred will want to see you die himself. But know this. In the north, in the waste beyond Eli's burial ground, Arthur will die at Camlon. For Mordred. Sir Lancelot laughs darkly. This way, Meadow. So that guy just, like, bounced out and left? All right. You see what I mean? Like, you don't always have to fight in this game. Like, I had a feeling that that guy could charge me from over there because we were going into our fighting stances, and all it takes is for him to move into my square, and I die, and I have to start over from the beginning. And so in that case, I felt like discretion was the better part of Valor in sort of falling back and just, like, making sure that he has to expose himself to me killing him in order to close. And look, like, we lasted so long in that combat that eventually he just, like, disengaged, went into, like, an evil villain monologue and, like, left. Fair enough. We've got a Dolman over there, and we've got Dinas Armanac. Let's go to Dinas Armanac. The fields are tended and the crops grow tall and strong. Good. There might be people over here. And we might be able to, like, maybe buy something or trade or get some more food, maybe some more rations. So we've got a long journey in front of us to come on. It is twilight now. Rain beats down, drenching cloak and horse. From Midvi Castle, the path winds downhill into Dinas Armanac. This isn't right. Where is everyone? This is a village, is it not? There should be families and children. A wolf paces between the houses of Dinas Armanac. The smell is musty and full-blooded. If Arthur were here, he would be making ready to return with a complement of knights. Sir Mordred doesn't even know what he's stolen from all of us. The wolf moves closer, soundlessly. All right, well, I'm going to keep going after. I want this stuff over here. So if the wolf is going to follow me, he can follow me. The village must have been abandoned. There's no smoke from the chimneys, no music, no song. Mice and turnips are washing away. Downhill as the rain pours down. Oh, he wants to move diagonal. Oh, I'm going to grab that right there. Did you creatures drive everyone out? Or did you move in, I wonder, since the villagers were gone? There we go. Now we're getting some resolve. This is going to be the currency that allows us to use our special abilities and attack from, like, further away. These villagers, another village took them in? Are they camped up the hill somewhere? 
the wolf growls as it leaps and bares its teeth. Well, apparently he's got better stuff to do. I'm just going to grab that resolve right there. I can see Windasan Marsh from here. A thicket of reeds rattling in the treacherous mud flats. I'll need to be careful there, or so I've heard. I suppose we could fight this guy. Perhaps it knows that Lancelot is almost away. There we go. The wolf has been vanquished. Oh, there's another one. That's fun. Lancelot prepares to strike down the wolf and clear the path from Dinas Armanac. Uh, is he in diagonal mode right now? I think he is. He's in diagonal mode, so I should be able to press up on him. The wolf slinks away between the fences. Oh, he just, like, left. Nice. The road north is dark. Lancelot lets out a sigh of relief. We need to rest here. Our morale is really bad. So let's go ahead and get some sleep here. Hey, two extra rations, too, and an overturned barrel. Nice. Once Mordred is put down, families will return. This should help out with our morale by quite a bit because our morale is looking like really, really bad right now. I need it to be like up and beefier. I'm pretty sure it cuts off like right there where the knot work stops. Uh, we can go to a dolmen, we can go to a convent, and we can go to Windison Marsh. Let's go to the dolmen and see what happens over here. Journey is long and you are well rest. Yeah, we can eat some rations. We have loads of rations left over. Just go ahead and throw them down my gullet real fast. The haunted dolmen of Gwyn. The long watches of night are over and the rain does not let up. There is no shelter to be found out on the scraggy heath. The rolling grass of the haunted dolmen of Gwyn covers a ring of ancient stones. It was once a burial ground for a people now forgotten. It is now home to only vermin and ghosts. It's a long way to come lawn, Lance. Further than Brittany, through wild woods and marshes. Alright. Well, I mean, let's change stance for now. Keep my guard up, I'll be safe enough. So there's rats over there doing what they do. The rain shows no signs of stopping. I love the animation style. Like, I think the game is really pretty to look at. It sincerely is. Oh. That'll end. Does he attack diagonal? Oh, he moves and attacks diagonally. I learned a new thing today. Interesting. Good to know. Unfortunately, I think he has me. If I move there, possibly. Depends what stance it puts me in. Like, if it puts me into a good fighting stance. Like, I don't know if it's going to put me into the cardinal fighting stance or into diagonal stance when I go over here. Okay. It tells you. So that's all right. We can chill right here. If they push up on us, they push up on us. Unfortunately, this guy right here is not being aggressive. There's got to be a way past. There we go. Perfecto. And he can only move diagonal, so we should be solid now. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting strategy game. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a strategy game that works like this one does. Oh, there's another one. That's beautiful. Alright, well. I guess we'll move to here. He can only move diagonal anyways, so... I'm going to keep killing them. I'm, I'm kind of curious what happens if I keep killing rats. Oh, that was the last one. I thought maybe it would keep, like, spawning them. The path goes on from here. The road from here leads down to the waters of the Copper Rock, a wet bogland as far as the eye can see. I will need to be on my guard if I go that way, or so Merlin used to say. He lowers his sword and calls for his horse. 
I feel like dismounting just to kill a bunch of rats is kind of beneath us as a knight, but I get it, man. I get it. Uh, we can go to a convent. So we can go to Windesan, we can go to the lake, or we can go to the marsh. Let's go to the convent. That sounds pretty cool. I mean, I don't know if we have convents in the United States. I don't know if that's a thing. If it is, it'd be over on the East Coast. Like, I don't know, there might be one over here. I don't know if I've ever seen a nun. Like, in my entire life, I don't know if I've seen a nun. Like, Catholicism is not huge on the West Coast. Like, there is some. Like, there's definitely, like, a Catholic church in every city. But at the same time, I don't think I've ever seen a nun. Then again, why would I? You know, I grew up Protestant, so I guess I wouldn't have seen a nun. You know what I mean? Uh, tumbled pillars, fallen walls. What had seemed a stronghold is in fact a ruin, open to the elements and lashed by the winds. But the stones are not silent. Oh good, there's something inside of here. I think this was once a wealthy abbey. What changed? Well, now it's a place full of rats. So that's all you need to worry about now. Whatever happened here, no one wanted to come back and try again. So I'm assuming on higher difficulties, it gets rid of like the little warnings that tell you you're going to die if you move there. Not a single treasure left. See, it put me in diagonal mode that time, and I don't know why. So you move to there, and he's going to try to get me. Oh, they've got me kind of checkmated right now. A little bit anyways. I'll go over here. Move over to there. He can no longer attack. We've got the initiative now. So we'll move in and slay this guy. It looks like they can only move one of their characters at a time. And so I'm assuming this game is going to be kind of like chess once we have a party. The road to Kamlan begins here. Oh, nice. I'm assuming it's going to be like chess where it's going to be about setting up kind of blockages and ambushes and forcing your opponent to move into your attackers. Uh, which is an interesting way to approach strategy, especially when it's zero-sum like this game, where, like, that's it. Like, if they move onto your square from their direction of dominance, you die. Like, there is no second chance. He swings again, sending another rat to the dirt. All right, well, let's get out of here. The remaining rat disappears in fright while Lancelot sighs with relief. We haven't picked up any allies yet, actually. I picked up allies pretty quickly in my last playthrough, but it looks like we haven't really picked anything up. Okay, so we can go to Eli's Burial Ground. We can go to Windeson Marsh. We have plenty of food. Let's go to the marsh. We'll take as many stops as we possibly can. The sun is slipping away and the rain is dispersed into a thick haze. Cloth flaps and flags fly. Windison Marsh is filled with pavilions and tents. Never liked the marshes. Yeah, swamps are pretty miserable. I'm not a big fan of them either. Water. Neither side can charge through water. And they cannot be claimed. There's somebody over there and he's got a sword. I'm going to take the high ground right here. Strangers aren't welcome here. Mmm... The mud gets in between your toes. Oh, there's two of them. That's not good. Change stance, please. Well, his sword's not raised. Are you scared, Sir Lancelot? You should be. Uh, what does he attack on? So, he's got a diagonal stance. So, he fights from the same stances that I do. Which means I should be able to move right here. And he's still got to change stances. Sir Lancelot, you have blundered into Windeson Marsh. You will not stumble out. Okay, so if I take his piece right there, I get aced on the next turn. I'm going to force him to change stances. How can you call yourself a knight when you have no honor? No more morals than a worm. We are loyal to the crown and to the king. And that king is Sir Mordred.
All right. Fall back to here. Let's see if he follows up. Would you not prefer to join us than to die? Mm. Can push forward over here and it would scramble up the entire battle. I'm going to do it. And still, I hope for forgiveness. Alright, we'll chillax right here for a minute. I don't want any trouble. I think our only... Actually, I, I think our only option is actually to move through. No matter what attack I make. Because this guy is refusing to engage. So this guy is acting like a pillar. He's just staying in one spot. And this guy is rotating around him. Which is actually pretty smart. I don't know if the AI is doing it intentionally. But as long as this guy keeps rotating, I can't take his piece without getting took back. Or getting cut off on the way. And so honestly, I think charging through and taking the exit and escaping is the best way to do it. Enough. Do not try to reach Kamlan. We will not warn you again. With that, the knights loyal to Sir Mordred give a yell and stride away. Lancelot smiles with grim satisfaction. He whistles and Meadow paces obediently to his side. Yeah, it's got almost like a chess feel to it where, like, I do really, really like the fact that combat is not the end-all, be-all, though. Like, I really enjoy the fact that the game doesn't expect you to kill every single enemy. Uh, in that case, the absolute best option for us was just to achieve the goal, say, hey, the enemy's gate is down and go for it while using our special abilities. Uh, that strategy they were employing right there couldn't really be countered without sacrificing a piece, and, and so I'd rather not do it. If we could get them to separate more than one adjacency away from each other there was a chance we could have taken the initiative but we were waiting so long that our morale was falling and when that gets to zero we lose and so I had to make a decisive decision otherwise we weren't going to come out of it uh, my name is Splattercat this is Pendragon uh, Pendragon I hope you guys liked it Pendragon Pendragon I don't know either way you can get the game down below kind of an interesting little RPG uh, about building a story surrounding these characters and also it's got little tactical combats in it I'll see y'all next time thank you for being here how you doing? Take care, everybody. It's been a blast. Check out the Discord and check out the Twitch stream. Bye.